Every organization has their own unique set of organizational security policies. In this video, we'll talk about regulatory compliance. Regulations will vary from industry to industry and also from jurisdiction to jurisdiction around the globe. However, regulations can have an influence over the organization security policy, acceptable use policies, and also the selection of which security controls will be used. So for example, specific data sanitization or wiping tools might be required for law enforcement when wiping hard disks before equipment is decommissioned. Confidentiality could also be a part of regulatory compliance where we are preventing the unauthorized access of sensitive data. So encryption might be required for data in use, data in motion, such as that being transmitted over a network, and data at rest, such as data being stored on disks, either on premises or in the cloud. In some cases, regulations might detail what are acceptable algorithms that are used for the encryption. Regulatory compliance can also stipulate how we verify data integrity or the trustworthiness of data. There might be certain authentication controls that must be put in place, such as multi-factor authentication, which is required to connect to a sensitive network. Or there might be hashing that is required to generate a unique value on data so that in the future, when we run that calculation again, we can detect whether or not a change has occurred. Because if a change has occurred, the unique value or hash will be different than the original hash. Regulatory compliance can also apply to the availability of IT systems, networks, and data, so that data is available when it's needed. Now, this might require us to use clustering solutions so that network services are running on multiple hosts, and should one host fail, users would be redirected to that same network service running on another host. Now, in order for the data to be kept up to date and consistent, clustered servers might use shared storage. We might also use replication to replicate data to other locations or even to synchronize it to the cloud so we have another copy that's available if something happens to the primary copy of data. Now, if we're going to do that, we should look very carefully at our cloud service level agreement or SLA to make sure that we know exactly what the availability promises are from that specific provider. Some examples of regulations include Canada's PIPIDA. This is the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act, where it relates to data collection and how it will be used for private information. In the United States of America, we've got HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which controls how sensitive information is shared between U.S. government agencies. In the European Union, we've got the EU Data Protection Directive, Directive 95-46-EC, which deals with the protection of personal data in and outside of the European Union. In this video, we discussed regulatory compliance.